We both chanced our arm in the world of voiceovers. Yes. Now, weren't you for a while the man who implored us to go to Marks and Spencers? Yeah. I did M&S for a couple of years. I did Harrods. Harrods? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was in the, I was, yeah. Oh, I've never done that. If you a Harrods rewards card, you can pick one up in the store. I'm going to do one of mine. You see if you can come back. We'll play voiceover tennis. Here we go. Philadelphia with chives. Only at your m and Subway, eat fresh. <laughs> no, did you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, yeah, there is only one sale. There is only one. Gaviscon cool. What a feeling. Stop it. Hey, welcome, welcome. I hope you're well. I hope things are, are okay where you are and, and that you're keeping an even keel. Uh, today's guest is a wonderful, wonderful man. He is an old friend. Uh, he's an actor, he's super, super talented. It's Eminem, Matthew McFadden. Yes, he's there. Yes, he's there. Look at that. So good to see you. How are you? I'm all right. We should say to people now then, so we are... We're still neighbours. We used to be very close neighbours. Yeah, we used to be what two houses? No, one two houses separating us. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And those um, were glory we, days. We would see a lot right. of you and Keeley. There would be takeaways. Um, yeah, lots of lots of takeaways. Um, but we do okay, don't we? For two sort of middle-aged men with families and busy lives. Twice a year, three times a year, maybe. Although I saw you the other day as I was driving past you in the street. You did, and you shouted, wanker, out of your car at me. And you had the good grace to turn <laughs> around and see who it was <laughs> who'd leant out of their car window. And, and I you really gave it, wanker! Yeah, it was great. It was <laughs> so how did you know, how did you know that the the greeting was intended for you. <laughs> I don't know. These things happen at lightning speed, don't they? Sort of lots of little neural signals. Yeah. And so I must have somehow recognised the, the timbre of your voice and seen you and it all made sense very quickly. Do you remember when we met? Yes, I do. We met. Did we meet at the read-through? It was a big old cast, wasn't it? It was the Anthony Trollope's The Way We Live Now. The Way We Live Now with David Suchet in the lead. Yeah. And did I know Keeley then? Had I already done a cock and bull story? I don't think no. I had. No. 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 I, I didn't know Keeley then. <laughs> so <laughs> let's, for, let's, let's just forget about Keeley. She was not, yeah. she wasn't in the picture. I didn't know her. You didn't know her. This was a drama on the BBC, and I had a little biddly bit in it, me and David Bradley playing. David Bradley. Um, lovely David Bradley. David Bradley, interestingly, working with David Yates, and they went on to have a long working relationship in the Harry Potter film. I once had a sniff from the Harry Potter, I'm going to use the word franchise, to be the voice of a ghost. <laughs> and, and on the day that this inquiry, and let's not say it was an offer, on the day this inquiry came through, or perhaps I was feeling a little grand, and I thought, I don't just want to be the voice of a ghost. I want to be <laughs> Ron Weasley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, they could age me down, surely. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so I didn't... And I, a teacher I don't, in Hogwarts, you know, some kind of teacher. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah. I, so I passed on it, and now my, my younger kids, in fact, I think all the kids, but particularly the, the boys, you know, are 12 and 9, They'll bring this up with incredulity. Yeah, what were you doing? The ultimate, yeah. I think, when you've got kids, would to be in would be to be in a Marvel film. Yeah, yeah. Now, does that hold any know. appeal for you? I don't know. I, I guess the the sort of the demented glamour of it does, but I've but in truth, no. And I and that's sort of a dodgy thing to say, I suppose, because they, <laughs> they're one of, my my little my littlest boy before he went back to school, sat in the, he got in terrible trouble um, and he was grounded, he did, he was naughty. And um, so he sat and he took away his Xbox and all the rest of it. So he sat and watched all the Marvel films. And I went in and I sort of poo-pooed them and I got in and I really enjoyed them. I think they're brilliant. They're funny and much funnier than you'd think. I'm sort of happy to be a gun for hire. I quite like, you know, I like doing 
a big silly film and a small telly and a play and a bits and pieces. You know, I think that's part of the like, nice thing about being an actor. Wouldn't you agree that you're sort of you're happy to do anything? And I, I, in my introduction to you, I said he's an actor. And in a lot of the people I've I've interviewed, I've said actor, also a writer, a singer. You don't write, as far as I'm aware. No, I don't. No. And so you are a classic, traditional, <laughs> as, as you just said, like a gun for hire. Yeah, pick me. <laughs> pick me. I do. I feel quite happy. I'm, and I'm not, I don't, I'm, I don't have a terrible urge to get things off the ground either, which yes, yes. some actors do and look brilliantly, you know, and are brilliant at it. Um, I don't have that desire. Um, I work sometimes with a, a Mancunian comedian who, who was big in the 90s, Steve Coogan. And he is, yeah, no, you Google him. And okay, he yeah. is one of the most driven people and he <laughs> is developing Project yeah. after project. When we're doing the trips, he's on the phone. He's, oh, I've, yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been doing a, a yeah, thing yeah. about this, and we're developing that. Keely has started a production company, mm. and she's. It's really, it's really, it's been wonderful watching her because she's really good at it. I feel, as far as I can tell, and she likes it, and she seems to be, she seems to have a real facility for that side of mm. it. Well, I've um, I've had production companies, but I've never, I've just never pushed them forward. I mentioned Steve. He and I both failed our RADA auditions. Really? Yes. Thank you for the shock. Yeah. You were a roaring success. Tell me about it. I was 17 when I left school, but I, I auditioned for the National Youth Theatre and I thought I secretly applied to RADA and Central and Manchester Poly, as it was known then, um, which is a brilliant drama course. And, uh, and I got into RADA and I couldn't believe it. I wasn't expecting to at all. Were you, you not intimidated? I, I was very intimidated in the audition. There were other boys who seemed a lot older than me with long, yeah. flowing, byronic hair and long coats. And I thought, oh, yeah. I felt very provincial. There were lots of sort of very hairy men. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Especially well, at death, really beard, young, but with and beards hair. and, and, and yeah, hair. Yeah. And you think, how has that yeah. happened? Terrifying, the whole thing. But I did a bit of Henry V. I sort of copied Ken Branagh's speech, tennis ball speech in Henry V. I sang a bit from Carousel, which I had done at school with Ruth Jones. Were you at school with Ruth? Yeah, yeah, we were at school together, oh. yeah, yeah. And, um, and, uh, and I sang, my little girl, pink and white as peaches and cream. Nice. And they were looking at me as if to say, gee, a God alive. <laughs> well, I had, there was an actor called John Dutteen, Yes, it's lovely. Actor. He he was on the panel. Sometimes the rather people got got working actors to come view the prospective students and adjudicate. And uh, he was there. And he's on my second on my recall. He said, "How old are you?" And I said, "I'm 17." And he said, "What?" And there was lots of sort of looking at papers and looking at my my form. And he said, "You're 17." And I said, "Yeah." And he said, "Well, you're too young." So I walked out crushed. I remember thinking, "Oh, that's it then." Anyway, and then I got a recall for the workshop day, so it was okay. But that was, yeah, it was just scary. Congratulations on the success of Succession. Thank you. I meant to ask you, what is happening in the next season? Um, I, I, I know a little bit. Mm. Um, and mm. I can't divulge, obviously. No, but no, obviously I don't want you to divulge. Just, just tell me what's exciting. going to happen. <laughs> uh, it's in a. It, it's actually in a really mouth-watering place because um, it's so beautifully set up. Where we let you know with Jeremy's yeah. the twist at the end. Yeah. I oh, don't give I don't, anything. Seriously, I, I don't uh, want to be the guy where you looks, accidentally say like, something. Okay. It looks like cousin Greg has gone to the dark. Has gone to Team Kendall, doesn't it? Anyway. Yeah. But listen. But seriously, Matthew, I, I don't want you to accidentally let something slip and it to be no. on my thing. Our friendship couldn't yeah. survive it. I, I don't want you yeah, to be yeah. that guy. Okay. <laughs> you heard about what Rob did? No. Oh, he totally screwed me up. You're cancelled after the third series. <laughs> oh, that would be awful, wouldn't it? Yeah, because of you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being stood outside a restaurant just outside Richmond with you when you were we'd had lunch and you were about to go and do the pilot. And I remember right. you telling me, yeah, I'm going to New York. I'm doing this thing. It's about this media family. I thought, oh, OK. You could argue it's the best thing on the television, Matthew. And your performance is, is it's a performance to be envied 
It's a performance to be to look at and go, oh, I would love to do that. Tell tell me about kind. the decision. It's like that... like any, and you know this as you know you know this as well as anybody. It's 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 the writing. It sort of looks after you. It's so good. But you make amazing Again. choices in it, though. You make amazing decisions. The way you play him. So Tom Wamsgans is that a real name? Wamsgans. Is that a real name? Yeah, there's, yeah. It's I don't know who came up with it. It's so um, good because it's an awkward name, isn't it? And it slightly yeah. makes you think of glands. <laughs> yeah, glands and wounds. It's just a. It's just such a wombs gan. It's horrible. It's, it's all that the characters there in the name, and then the, and then <laughs> and then nobody can really pronounce it properly, you know. Especially Logan, which is always slightly. <laughs> And the way he's trying to fit in with that, with that brutal family. Tell me about the little things you do in it, like you'll give little waves occasionally, or you'll just be so sort of out of step with the way they... The, and and you, you judge those. Now, listen, I know it's not easy when someone just sits here no. blowing smoke <clears throat> and everything, but seriously, it, it's that good what I you just, do. I sort of think of the most toe curling thing I can think of doing and then do it and then because of the way we shoot you know they it's all quite loose I sort of do a lot and they probably fill it you know they just get rid of lots of stuff and keep the best bits or the bits that work and... in the little that I've dipped my toes into a world of I've, I've had the occasional you know you dip your toes in that luxury world it seems to me like an incredibly accurate depiction of that type of level of luxury they do have a sort of advisor or advisors on the uber wealthy and how they operate and in the first series we had a note from one of these advisors saying there's too many too much overcoat too many scarves and hats and gloves and overcoats don't need them the really uber rich don't really need them because they're going from the chopper to the limo to the apartment to the profit you know yes yes they all that's went. so true all the sort of cashmere overcoats went that's true. And yet the cashmere itself remains because there's such a lovely collection oh, of suede. sweaters and sweat. It makes beautiful. I've developed an intolerance to cashmere. I've become very sensitive to it. <laughs> Have you? It's nothing to laugh Why? about, Matthew. I'm sorry. I don't know. So, well, that's good. I mean... Well, no, because I love cashmere, but it... it Why, it, does it bring you out in a rash? No, it tickles my nose. My nose starts to run. And if I wear yeah. cashmere socks, darling, my, my legs start to itch. Really? Yes. So what do you go, do you like lamb's wool? I, I've gone to cotton. I, I've gone back to cotton. But it does mean that if, if Jesse Armstrong uh, were thinking that they needed a, the shorter Welsh man in the show... Listen, they might, yeah. They, 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 they're not going to come here because I simply couldn't... Well, you can wear sort of silks and linen. Linen is very good. There was a lot of linen on the yacht. You mentioned Kenneth Branagh earlier. He told me he was on stage with an actor, I think Tom Hiddleston, and over Tom Hiddleston's shoulders, he can look into the wings and he sees the actress that's about to make an entrance and he sees her pass out. <laughs> Could you imagine? He tells a story in his autobiography about missing a... There's a very complicated business in, in Henry V, I think, with a, with a glove. And he's inspecting the dead on, of Agincourt. And then he finds a glove and talks to lots about this thing. But the glove wasn't there. So he had to keep inspecting the dead with no lines. And then somebody he could see in the wings going. <laughs> and then someone produced a sort of motorcycle, like a motorbike gauntlet. <laughs> And that came on stage and he did this whole thing. with. I did a little bit in Cinderella, his film, and, and I did a play with him, a farce, directed by Sean Foley, who you I worked saw it. with. Fantastic. And you came to think, yeah. well, yeah. and you remember Alex McQueen w was in that, playing my love rival, the, the psychiatrist. That's doctor, right. Remember? Well, That's right. we had a thing where Alex got um, food poisoning. So uh, in this play, it's a one act play, Ken and I would be on the stage the whole time. It didn't come off. We were about to go on one night, and the company manager came up to us and said, oh, just. Alex is projectile vomiting in his dressing room. So if he can't get on stage, so-and-so will take his place. And Ken, cool as a cucumber, did not... He just, he just went, unless he physically cannot stand up, he will be on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so what then, happened? Did Alex so come then, on? So then we go through the play. Now, Alex doesn't come on for about half an hour. And we get to this line. You may remember it. And I, you know this is coming. Yes, this yes. This terrible dread. Yes. Yeah. I've got to run upstage, this upstage door. i got to go, I'll go and get a doctor. I was playing Welsh. And yes. I open the door. It is Alex. And he's white as a sheet. And he's sweating. And we <laughs> end up doing, we have to do this sort of fight. And then he ends up on top of me on the bed, like straddling me with his face there. And then we freeze and the action goes to the other side. So when it freezes, I whisper to him, are you all right? And he went, uh. and he st <laughs> over my face, he started to go. <laughs> he managed to hold it together. And we, we do the curtain call. We go off. We say, well done, Alex. And he went, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember you doing a thing for me once. And I'm hoping I'm going to be able to persuade you to do it now of the actor in the wings who is bitching about an offer they've had. <laughs> do you that's remember a, that? Yeah, that's, that actually is, that should be really attributed to Toby Jones. Okay, okay, okay. We sort of, maybe we sort of invented it together, but it's the actor, yeah, it's the actor who misses their, because there's a tannoy running all the time, you know, in the theatre. And so you can hear the show on the relay. And so you get very good at hearing when your cue's coming. And also you get a call from the stage manager who's and, so, and so, but sometimes you forget and you're off, and it's the, it's just the worst thing in the world. So you're talking away, saying, "Well, I'm not going to go down to Chichester for you know for that, and certainly not with Trevor." Uh, and I'm not. I'm... Oh no, it's fine. I can hear. Uh... <laughs> and then you hear, <laughs> then you hear the actor going on stage and talking because they've just sprinted from the dressing room. <laughs> I've seen it happen. Right, listen, you it's been lovely. Thank you so much. I can't praise you enough for the work you do in succession. It's uh oh, it's God, great. You're and very and then lovely. but everything, seriously. I mean, you know, recently the, the 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 Who Wants to Be a Millionaire thing, just just wonderful performances. And uh I'm I'm proud to have you as a friend. Me too. I'll never understand why you moved away, but that's another story. Give my love to Keely and uh I will. I'll love see to you Claire. soon from a passing car and I'll shout. Yeah. My God! Thanks, Matthew.